so hi everyone thank you sorry my my apologies um so just real quick uh thank you for being with us today uh it's been a lovely day and i'm glad to see you all here um so just real quick uh getting us started uh prior to starting this last session i just want to uh uh just instruct you all a little bit. So in the bottom of your screen, there's gonna be a button that says reactions. When you click on it, there's gonna be an option called raise hand. So please, uh, uh, at some point throughout this uh, session, we will ask you to utilize this feature so that we can get your questions. Um, so if you have any technical difficulties, feel free to also put them in the chat. Uh, there's going to be staff from TOR International that I will be able to help you in case there are some technical difficulties. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for, for sticking around and enjoy. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I also just wanted to say that we have digital advocates here. We have global advocates, um, it, people in our global advocacy network. And so just know that when you're asking your questions about getting involved with us, uh, you can ask about any role that um, makes sense to you or that you're interested in. So my name is Katie Soros. I'm the Global Advocacy Consultant with T1 International. I've introduced myself already. Um, and uh, I, I will pass it along to, um, to the next, next person um, in the staff team who'd like to introduce themselves. Hi everyone, um, I'm Yamarai, I'm from Zimbabwe. Uh, I've lived with diabetes for 17 years now. Uh, my 17th anniversary di was this week uh, and I'm a, I'm a global, um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm part of the Global Advocacy Network. I'll pass it on to the next speaker. Hi everyone, my name is Stephanie Arsenault and I am in Salt Lake City, Utah. I have had type one diabetes for almost 37 years. My husband also has type one and our only son, I should say our only child <laughs> does as well. Um, I appreciate T1 International having this panel today and I hope we can answer a lot of your questions for you. Hi everyone, um, my name is Elizabeth. I'm a digital advocate for type one international. Um, I've been an advocate since August 2020. Um, I was also diagnosed with type 1 diabetes um, about 14 years ago. Um. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, you've met me already, but hi, my name is Jesus Morales Sanchez. I'm the advocacy manager with T1 International, and I've been living with diabetes since October of 2018. Hi everyone, I'm Tolu and you've met me already and I'm the Support and Engagement Coordinator for T1 International and I'm also part of the um, Digital Advocacy. So if you have any questions about being a digital advocate, feel free to ask away. And I'm Elizabeth Beaster, Founder and Executive Director. You heard from me at the beginning of the day. I'm here to help answer any questions as well. And really, really glad to have some of our volunteers here to, to help you have the firsthand experience of what it's like. So we look forward to hearing from you and yeah, ready for, for audience questions of anything at all that you might wanna know. There are no silly questions. So feel free to ask away. And again, one, just a reminder, uh, if you can just use the raise hand uh, feature on Zoom, that would be super helpful so that we can then like unmute you and like uh, you can ask your question directly. Um, so yeah. I'm seeing some questions come into the chat, uh, which is great. Have, have you made any new connections from being a digital advocate is one. Yeah, I can take that one. I have 100% made new connections um, as being a digital advocate. Actually, um, one example that, I ju that just happened last week, um, I'm a freshman in college. And actually through being a digital advocate, um, there's someone else at my college who's an upperclassman. Um, who's also a digital advocate. And we were able to get lunch last week, um, which was amazing to have someone at my college who also has diabetes to be a resource for me. Um, but I've also made connections through our meet and greets. Um, I've been to two meet and greets so far um, where the digital advocates just get together and talk about any, anything we want, life with diabetes, our technology, um, you know, things, issues, and issues related to insulin access. Um, and I feel like, um, I've definitely made a few friends. Um, I follow so many 
people on Instagram who are also digital advocates. Um, and, you know, we talk, we respond to each other's stories. Um, I'd feel super comfortable reaching out and asking any of them for tips um, and stuff like that. And I've also just gotten a lot, um, gotten to know the staff of T1 International um, as well. So if you're looking to meet other diabetics or just other people um, in the diabetes community as a whole, being a digital advocate is a great way to do that. And then there's a question here. Can you suggest the projects for 20 fourth graders? Have you ever had a group of school children become digital advocates? Um, so pretty much anyone can get involved with advocacy. Um, we do ask that anyone that's under the age of 16 do have to get um, consent from a carer, give caregiver or parent. And we do have that form that we will send out to them if that's something that they're interested in taking part in. Thank you, Toby. That's a great point. Um, I would also say I, I'm sure there are options that we can come up with um, for perhaps digital advocates. Um, there's always complications with Internet engagement and depending on, again, permissions and things like that. But love the idea of a group of 20 uh, 24th graders wanting to get involved. So that could be something that we sort of think creatively about of what, what might be the most fun for them and the way to make an impact for us maybe a small fundraiser or just some sort of activity. Um, again, if there's consent with photos and showing that they're engaged with the cause, um, there's there's lots of things that we could do to maybe educate them and have them support the cause too. So um, lots of creative juices can get flowing on that one, I think. Yeah, and I think I think um, one last one, and like Liz, you can like chime in and uh, um, make sure that it makes sense. Um, if they're willing to, they can also like help create one of these signs. And the signs yes. themselves could be part of our digital challenge. Um, just like, you know, really bringing awareness that one in two people uh, living with diabetes um, cannot have regular access to insulin around the world. So thank you for that question. Great. Um, I'm noticing that we have a question, a hand raised, uh, but I have just lost where, um, the person think, on screen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, great. Hi. Hi, everyone. First, I want to say like a huge thank you. This has been like such a cool experience and just like getting insight from everybody else who like shares the same experience as I do has just been completely amazing. Um, I had kind of like a multi-step question, I guess. First, um, I am really interested in being a digital advocate and like I want to know like more information about how I can go about that. But also I had a question specifically for Tulu. I think you mentioned that you're an RN. And um, I think Mariana mentioned this in her segment, how being type one diabetic has really influenced like her career path and like what she wanted to do. And I've like experienced that a lot because I wanted to go into healthcare because of my experiences and like what I've seen. So I'm like in nursing school right now, I'm gonna graduate in the spring. So I felt that like nursing was a really kind of involved career. And like we learn about like, you know, as a nurse, you're a patient advocate and like these are all the things that you do and blah, blah, blah. So I guess my question is in that aspect, like how do you feel like, cause in the US at least, like we kind of view the healthcare system as like a failed system, if you will. And as a patient, like you have this view of the healthcare system, but then like as a healthcare worker, like you're in the system. So I guess like, I know you said that you work in the UK, but how do you think you can like overcome being an advocate, like in your workplace, as well as through type one international and just like kind of how to like go with that struggle of not being like part of the problem, but being part of the solution, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm kind of having this like internal struggle because I want to obviously help on a personal level because like we need to take care of a patient and like even me, like that was one of the big reasons why, again, I went into this and specifically in pediatrics, like I'm really interested in pediatrics. And um, I saw in one of my clinical rotation days, I had a patient that was um, type 1 diabetic and I just like connected with him so much and I was like so moved by him and his, his family and I really felt like, again, I think multiple people mentioned this, but like the thought of I'm doing this so that somebody else, like you can just hold somebody else's hand and tell them like, I know what you're going through and like, you don't have to go through this alone. Um, and I just, I just think that like, I want to do more than just on like an individual patient level, but more of like a system level, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, absolutely. Thank you for your question. And honestly, it's diabetes that got me 
changing career path from anesthesia to nursing because I could see that there were gaps in the healthcare system and understanding what diabetes is, even though we learned it in school, but it's still very vague and very strange to people. And it's a lot to learn, which is understandable. And like we mentioned, you know, we are our own advocate. We are our best advocate. And I think that you're in a very unique situation where you have the experience of being, I don't, correct me if I'm wrong, do you have type one diabetes? Yes, I do for like 17, 18 years, I think. Exactly. So you have a unique experience of having type one diabetes and being in the system. And, you know, when we learn in nursing school, the first step of any care pathways assessment, and you've assessed and realized that, you know, there's a, there are gaps in this stuff that we can do better. And honestly, using your personal experience, if you feel comfortable with that and just sharing that in your workplace, I had to advocate for myself as a nurse and as a patient, you know, little things like making sure I get my breaks. And when they say, oh, you know, why do you need another break? That is my chance, not only to advocate for myself, but to advocate for other people with diabetes. And that's kind of a way to share knowledge. Like, you know, this, this is what happens if you don't get your break. This is what happens when just like, taking my insulin in front of people and they ask me questions and that's a way to kind of break down that uncomfortable conversation and the unknown. Um, I think that there are so many ways to get involved with advocacy as a nurse, um, depending on what your passion is. I know you're passionate about um, pediatrics and um, there are so many. You can be a pediatric endocrinologist, do endocrinology, you can work in a diabetes clinic, um, you could do public health nursing and work directly in the community there's so many career paths and I strongly encourage people that do have experience if that's what they're comfortable with have experience with diabetes and are in the healthcare field to truly get involved and raise more voices within our community I don't know if that answered your question yes it did thank you so much <laughs> and I was going to say something else like the part you said where you kind of like you're your own advocate I feel like I've already experienced that just by being in nursing school not not even in the actual career yet like when we were going over our like diabetes um, section there was a slide that my professor talked about in our pharmacology class about insulin and she was saying how you know before insulin was a death sentence for patients and because of Eli Lilly like now everybody's great and I kind of like interrupted her and this was like all during zoom and I was like yes that's true but like it's still a death sentence and I would really appreciate it if like maybe moving on like you could add a slide about mutual aid and about I mentioned like type one international and like these are things that nobody knows is going on and, and to somebody else who's in my class who's going to be a nurse they just think like oh you know like it was a problem and now there's a solution but it's like not that's not how it is in real life so I just you know kind of felt like that was something that needed to be said yeah I always um talk during those classes I'll be like well actually this is what happened to me and they're like wow okay Tell me more. So um, I think you're doing a great job. And nursing school is definitely tough for on its own, on mental health, and then to have diabetes on top and sitting through all those exams. You truly have to use the resources that are available to you. And if you need special accommodations, make sure you speak up for yourself because nobody truly understands what you're going through if you don't speak up and um, advocate. And I was just going to add one more thing, not that you've covered you've covered so much and obviously you have the first hand from a nursing perspective but um what you what you just shared about kind of saying well not everybody has access to insulin i think that you know no matter if you are in the healthcare system or whatever your job and your role is but particularly in the healthcare system just taking yeah that opportunity to like educate other people around you and like have them understand that the system is actually really broken and that yeah, on a systemic level, we need to understand the influence that the industry has and that, yes, insulin is saving lives, but it's also being kept out of the hands of, of so many. And it sounds like you're already doing that. And to me, that's advocacy on a systemic level. Um, but just as much as we can sort of scale that up by coming together and continuing to, to shout, um, the better, I think. Thank you, guys. I have one additional thing to add to that. So in your first, when you get into nursing, the career, in your first year, you get to do, I don't know if you, if it's like that in every state, but most state, you get to do um, one year of like a nurse residency and you have a choice to 
um, pick a topic that you're passionate about. And um, that is a great way as well to do advocacy and um, raise awareness because you're going to present to hundreds of people and that's and new nurses as well. And just to break that generational of not understanding really what diabetes is and actually educating people as new nurses as they go into their career. Um, thank you. Thank you to you both. I'm seeing a, a question in the chat box um, from Fiona to, to Yamurai. So um, in your role, Yamurai is a global advocate. Did you have any prior advocacy experience when you got started with us? Um, okay, so let me start off by by sharing a statement. And if, if, if some of you have followed me through the years, then you'll know the statement. So um, I remember 13 years ago now, um, someone came to me, a classmate came to me and said, sweetheart, um, if you don't mind, um, can you go and take your injections in the bathroom? Because we are scared of, we are scared of your injections. And, you know, this statement has literally haunted me throughout the years. Uh, during this period, um, I remember dropping two vials of insulin on the bathroom floor. And um, on one of the incident, in one of the incidences, I I ended up drawing insulin from the bathroom floor and injecting it because I didn't want a spike. And so uh, from that day on, I told myself that I'd speak up for myself. And now I don't only speak up for my spouse, for myself. I speak up for people who are like me. And so. Before joining T1 International, um, I actually started working with Liz um, in 2013, I think, just when she started T1 International. I didn't have much advocacy experience, but I have definitely grown in advocacy since 2013. I'm part of, you know, advocate for myself. Uh, I'm part, I've been part of T1 International for the longest time. And I think it's it's the organization that I've been with for the longest time now. So yes, I, I maybe just a little bit of advocacy experience before joining T1 International, but definitely, you know, I think I've grown much through, pe through hearing people's experiences, through seeing what other people go through over the years. And so, yes, of um, not much experience before joining T1 International, but I've grown with T1 International. I've been a part of other organizations and, you know, um, still growing in advocacy. So if that, uh, I, I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Yamara. It definitely does. Um, we so appreciate you. And that's such a vivid image, the story that kind of brought you to being an advocate for yourself and others. So. Thank you. Um, I also thought that maybe I would ask that same question to Stephanie, if you had prior advocacy experience and kind of what brought you to T1 International. Thank you for asking me that question. So I had what I would call the lonely advocacy experience where I would, you know, talk to family and friends about type one diabetes. I would, send off emails to my representatives occasionally when type 1 diabetes was a topic in the news. Um, but other than that, I didn't really have much experience, to be honest. Um, I came to T1 International through the founder of our Utah chapter, Mindy Hooley, um, through a post that I saw uh, that she made. And I've been um, part of this great community ever since. It's really been amazing to finally be around those that understand what it's like living with diabetes. Thank you, Stephanie. And then I see, I see another question for Stephanie actually um, in the chat uh, from Beth, uh, who would like to know Stephanie about your experience as a chapter leader. What's the time commitment like and what have you learned through your role? That's another great question. So the time commitment I'll start with first. Um, I think it's really whatever you would like to make it. It really is dependent on the goals that um, 
you have for your chapter and what you want to work on. It also depends on um, how the chapter has been built before you walk into the role. Um, so I'd like to say that's really up to you. Um, and, you know, as I stated in my introduction, I've had type 1 diabetes a long time. I have other autoimmune diseases. My husband has type 1, my son. So I, I have a full plate already, but I always can find time for advocacy. There's always time to help those that um, have diabetes. So um, I don't want the time commitment to um, frighten anyone. Um, like I said, it's really, you know, what you want to put into it. Um, and I've learned so much through the role, um, so much in a short amount of time. I came to the chapter about two years ago and I started out as uh, media lead. Then I was regional lead before um, I became chapter leader. Um, I've learned how to advocate better for um, those with type 1 diabetes and all forms of diabetes. Um, I've learned how to um, help to break apart stereotypes, how to combat stigma. Um, there's just so, so much. It's been um, incredible. And um, I'm grateful for the experience. It really has um, changed my life. I no longer feel alone. And that's very empowering. That just made me really happy. Sorry, I had to I had to voice that. But thank you, Stephanie, for sharing that. I think you've kind of answered this, but I was going to say if if each of you could just share maybe briefly, if um, you could say something to maybe somebody who's on this call who's like considering getting more involved, whatever role that may be, what would you what would you say? Say if you're considering getting involved, go for it. T1 International is such a great community to be a part of. I've absolutely loved my time working with this organization and the people that I've met um, are absolutely amazing. My favorite part of this organization is how global it is. Um, I love, love, love meeting and working with diabetics from all around the world. Um, that's been a highlight for me. Um, and if you're, if you're considering, go for it. I would say that the same thing. If you're considering um, getting involved, get involved. There are so many different roles and opportunities to advocate. And there are so much information on our website as well. Um, and if you require specific information, feel free to reach out to us and we are more than happy to answer them. Yeah, I would echo what everyone else said. Um, if you're on the fence about getting involved, just get off it and jump in. Um, there's so much you can do and you can decide, as I said before, how much you wanna put into it, how much you can put into it. Um, just sharing posts from T1 International is advocacy. Um, so it's, it's a really, again, it's a really empowering feeling to know that you're helping your community and you're making a difference regardless of how much time you put into your advocacy. Any thoughts from you, Ian Rye, what you would say if somebody um, was considering getting involved? Um, so just like what if just, you know, everyone's just said it, everyone else has said it. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you all so much. We, unless we have any final questions, we'll perhaps call that a wrap. Appreciate the three of you being here. And uh, yeah, I'm sure if, if anyone has further questions, we can connect you with these folks or we can answer many of the questions ourselves. So um, if you find yourself with, with further questions after this event, don't hesitate to reach out. Yeah, I just wanted to um, let you all know that we'll post some links in the chat box now. So if you're looking to volunteer with our USA chapters, uh, or our Global Advocacy Network, you can find links to apply to both on our website. And if you live primarily in the US, you can learn more and apply on our um, hashtag, uh, on a, sorry, learn more <laughs> and apply for our um, Insulin for All uh, State Chapters webpage. And we're popping a link um, to that in the chat now. So that should be going in. And then if you live in any country besides the US and you want to apply to join our Global Advocacy Network, you can find out more information about volunteering with us and apply on our Global Advocacy Network webpage. And that link is going in the chat box now as well. 
you'll find a big red button down at the bottom of the page that says learn more and apply. Um, and maybe you felt like the role of digital advocate would be a good role for you. And I think that one is going in the chat box for us now as well. Uh, there's a contact form that you can use once you've read about that role to reach out to us. Um, and so all of these are on our website and um, you can also get involved by following us on social media. So that's at T1 International on Insta, Facebook um, and Twitter. And um, we just really thank you so much for being here today and wanting to be involved. And so don't hesitate to reach out to us for questions. Um, thanks again to our amazing panelists for being here and for the work that they do every day to support T1 International's mission and to make sure that insulin for all becomes a reality. Thank you. And like I said, get involved, you won't regret it. <thank you. Thank you all so much. Thanks thank you so much. Thank for you.